Hello, this is Mark from Eclectic Arts. Hey, this is Rob from Cannibal Corpse. Hey, Rob, how you doing down there? Good, Mark. How you how you doing? Where are you at? I'm up in Seattle, and so I'm I'm doing all right. All the talk up here is uh, some pending snow, of <laughs> all things. Oh, okay. Well, it's usually rain, so. <laughs> That's right, and when any anytime they start mentioning the S word, then the whole city goes into a panic. <laughs> so. Yeah, like it actually doesn't snow a lot there. It's mostly rain year round, right? Yeah, you're right. And so sometimes in the winter we don't get any snow, but uh, now it looks like we're going to get a good five to ten inches starting tomorrow. So we'll see Ooh, what happens. Little snow front coming in. <laughs> yep, um, right into the right into the weekend. So perfect timing. <laughs> Uh, Time to bundle up. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, I'm assuming it's nice and warm and sunny down in Florida. Well, I mean, I've, I've wimped out since I moved down here from Buffalo. You know, my, uh, I always turn the heat on in the house whenever it gets lower. That, you know, like, oh, man, it's under 60. <laughs> <laughs> I need to turn the heat on in the house. <laughs> Oh man, it's so funny how you can get so acclimated to a different uh, climate when you, obviously being from New York and, and that area and being used to super cold, frigid winter, then moving down to Florida. And it's like now it's, yeah, when it gets below 60, oh my God, it's so freezing around here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just used to it being hot all the time, almost year round. These are the coldest months, January and February. Right, right. So yeah, Violence Unimagined, 15th studio album. My goodness. Um, when you uh, first joined the band uh, the first time, and then obviously the second time around, did you ever think you'd be talking about the 15th studio from Cannibal Corpse? Yeah, like, I, I, I really didn't look that far into the future. <laughs> <laughs> I never really figured, oh, yeah, well, someday I'm going to do Cannibal Corpse's 15th record. I mean, obviously, I haven't been on all of them, but... I mean, with the bands that I've been in other than Cannibal, I've definitely done 15 records for sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's been a long road, and since we were teenagers, this is what we wanted to do, so, I mean, this is what we made our life's work. Right. And so far, so good. We're, we're still going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so can you give me like a timeline since we've been in you know, this crazy pandemic lockdown since last year about, so when did you guys start writing and actually getting a chance to record this new album? Well, our last tour that we did was back in November. Yeah, the last show was the day before Thanksgiving 2020. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, so our plan was to pretty much like wait was it 20 or 19 i'm like being kind of oh. dumb right now <laughs> does that make sense was it 19 or 20 it's probably i'm guessing 19 i mean i don't know what it's like down there but like 2020 up here and around thanksgiving yeah there was no live events going on so it's probably 2019 yeah it had to have been i'm just like i'm having a mind fart right now no, but um yeah, we did. We finished our tour cycle for Red Before Black in November, and then um, you know we were just planning on staying at home to write and record another record, and so we started writing um, like in December, hmm. and then we, our plan was to go into the studio in April. We recorded April through June. And then, uh, yeah, like the whole COVID thing came about like right around March, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, Alex ended up not being able to come down to the studio to, to record with us. He ended up tracking his bass track at home and then just sent him to Eric. Oh. And then he just put him into the mix. But, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it was something that we've never experienced before, really. Like, that was the first time I ever recorded an album with Cannibal Course without Alex there. It was strange. 
Yeah, I, I can imagine that, uh, you know, being used to always having the, the members there in the studio and everyone tracking their parts and all that kind of thing, and then, yeah, having... Alex. Yeah, so to answer your question, you know, we wrote the music and the lyrics from, you know, December up until we went into the studio in April. Okay, all right. Um, and were you guys tracking down there? You must have been tracking down there in Florida, is my guess, then. Yeah, at Eric's studio in St. Pete. Okay, all right. Um, and, you know, how's it been? It's kind of twofold. I mean, Eric's been producing a lot of the records lately for Cannibal Corpse, and I believe he produced this one as well. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. He he produced four of four of them before this one. This is the fifth one that he produced. Mm-hmm. He did the Kill record. Evisceration Plague, Torture, and Red Before Black before this one. Right. So what, what's it been like, you know, obviously he's a friend of the band, now he's a permanent member of the band, and he's also produced the band. So what's it been like, you know, going through those, those album cycles from just the producing uh, side of things working with him? Well, I think he's just such a hard worker, you know. He just loves to keep busy, and he loves doing what he does, so... I feel like, at least on this last record this time around, I think he actually enjoyed being able to track on a record that he's producing. And I think it was it was just something new for him. He was excited about doing it because he's already produced four Cannibal records before this, and I was always saying that the way we got along and just the vibe with him in the studio working with him I always considered him to be like the sixth member of the band and and now he is a member of the band so it was, it just made sense and everybody gets along with him great he's just a very positive person to be around we've known him since about 89 pretty much mm-hmm. so we've all known him a really long time and I think he was just up to the challenge, you know, like, all right, well, I'm producing, he's already spending, you know, long hours in the studio working on it, but he, he also loves being able to track guitar, too, so, <laughs> you know, he's just doing what he loves. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I mean, with him uh, knowing you guys, obviously, and then working as a producer, and then having him join as a full time member of the band. I'm just kind of curious for yourself, being the other guitarist in the band. How's that uh, like? Is it kind of like it's really awesome having Eric and his you know guitar playing abilities? Is it also a little bit of like oh shit <laughs> because he's so good too? Well, yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I mean we've been friends for so long like I was saying and I always was I always thought like wow man it would be cool to do a project with Eric someday you know it was always just in the back of my mind like it would be really cool doing something with him instead of just working with him on recording stuff Mm -hmm. and now we're in a band together so yeah it's just a great fit and I'm not like intimidated by him at all you know I just I respect him as a guitar player and I think we work well together Mm -hmm. Um, I respect his opinion he respects mine so I just I think we we, we're both benefiting off of playing in a band together because we respect each other that's the, you know, that sounds great, and that, that key word respect has got to be. And I, I will add that he's definitely the better guitar player. I won't shy away from saying that, you know. <laughs> but I mean, it is what it is, you know. Like we both have different things to offer. I'm not mm-hmm. the best guitar player, but I think my strong point is songwriting. So mm-hmm. that's where I come in. Yeah, and, and like like any band, and you already know this too, that uh, it's always the the makeup of all the members that create what that band is and, and that sound and the style. So um, you've got a really unorthodox style of uh, rhythm playing and watching your right hand because I'm a guitar player myself, so it's kind of like that. I think it's called a, a banana thumb or something. <laughs> yeah, but that's what it is, man. You know, since I was a teenager, I've been being called that, so I accepted it, and it, it makes sense, you know. It looks like a banana. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but 
I noticed Marty Friedman, you know, kind of has something similar going on, just an even more pronounced bend to his to his thumb. Oh wow! <laughs> well, he actually bends his entire hand, which is weird. Oh wow! But um, it is somewhat similar. If you watch a video of Marty Friedman, then you'd be like, oh wow, he was right. <laughs> I'll have to check some of that out this afternoon. <laughs> Look at some Marty stuff on YouTube. <laughs> um, and you mentioned you know, that your strength uh, you feel as a, as a songwriter. So, what did you contribute to this new album? Uh, well, the, the the single that we just released last week, uh, mm-hmm. I wrote the music and lyrics to that one, Inhumane Harvest, mm-hmm. and then um, Murder is Rampage, the opening track. I wrote the music to that, and then Paul wrote the lyrics. Okay. And then I wrote two other songs, music and lyrics, Follow the Blood and Bound and Burned. So, um, yeah, I wrote three songs, music and lyrics, and then the fourth one, just the music, and Paul wrote the lyrics. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was just listening to Any Human Harvest again, and right when you get to like that two minute and five second when that has a huge heavy riff uh, break, that is freaking awesome. Um, it, it, that's going to make you snap your neck. I don't care who you are <laughs> as soon as you get to that point. Um, hey, well, yeah, I've been hearing that from a lot of people really love that middle part, and that's where I was saying my songwriting comes into play there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just want to make you turn that thing up and just <laughs> just go nuts. It just gets into that. Well, what I like to do is I try to go back to the roots of the sound and, like, capture that old vibe, old Cannibal Corpse vibe every once in a while and part the songs. And, like, to me, in my opinion, that riff could have been on the bleeding. Right, right. Absolutely, I absolutely agree with that, um, and that's probably also maybe something that uh, yeah, maybe some of the the older school fans like myself are picking up on. We have this mix of like the newer sound of things, but then yeah, you'll put a riff in like that, and it brings us back to the to the nineties. <laughs> yeah, because that's the whole thing. Like um, we we have evolved over the years, and I know um, a lot of older fans are like, oh, I'm not a big fan of the newer Cannibal sound. It's like. I guess it's progressed too much for them or something. And, like, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, well, yeah, I want to bring back, like, that old cannibal vibe every once in a while in certain parts of songs where I think it would fit good. Mm-hmm. And I think it's an important thing that we need to keep is, you know, just to keep that old sound intact sometimes. Yeah, no. Uh, I think a lot of the old fans definitely thank you <laughs> for doing that every now and then into a, into a track and injecting that that sound so we have a, a nice mix of the two. Oh yeah, and you know what? I appreciate you saying that because I'm just I'm glad that somebody notices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely notice. It's like, oh shit, <laughs> that's some good stuff right there. Well, yeah, I'm just, a lot of people are you know commenting, oh man, that middle part in that song, god damn. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well, see, that that's what I was going for, trying to capture that older sound. Yeah, and so for um, for the other three songs that we haven't had a chance to listen to yet at least as the public um, what can you tell me about the three other songs that you uh, did the music for well, and some of the lyrics too uh, well Murder is Rampage that one um, that's going to be the, the opening track of the album and um, I came up with the song title but then I really wanted Paul to write the lyrics because I was already kind of you know, stuck on writing lyrics for one of the other songs, and we were running out of time mm-hmm. to the point where I kind of felt like, man, you know what? I think I'd rather have Paul write the lyrics because he he wrote all the lyrics for um, the music that Pat wrote in the past. So mm-hmm. um, without him in the band anymore, I was I figured, well, you know what? We have to. We have to keep having Paul write lyrics for some of these songs because I think it's like an important part of the band to have him write lyrics because I think he writes good lyrics and he ended up writing some killer lyrics to that one, catchy vocal patterns, you know, that's another good thing about his vocal writing. So yeah, that's Murder is Rampage and then 
the first one that I wrote out of the four is Bound and Burned. That one is, it's got a really cool middle section. Like, when you hear it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's uh, where I have, there's, like, singing one line, and then there's a quick solo in between, and then there's another line of singing, and then another solo, like, you go back and forth between singing and guitar solos, just real quick one, you know, like maybe eight second solo or something. Mm-hmm. And it just, to me, it's a pretty cool dynamic to that part of the song. I think it makes the song what it is. And uh, so that's Bound and Burned, and then Follow the Blood is the other one that I wrote. And um, that one just got this really weird fucking like slow sludgy kind of groovy part and that's, I'll just leave it at that wait until you hear it <laughs> then everybody can be the judge <laughs> alright no that's, that sounds awesome I can't wait to hear, you know, hear these tracks I know at some point they'll probably send out some advanced things but since the album's not yeah I think the most important thing that, that we accomplished with these newer songs is we all just try each song we tried we really wanted each song to sound different from each other so um i'm sure we'll get a lot of people saying that it all sounds the same but <laughs> you know we've been dealing with that since the beginning <laughs> Well, it's it's again at least from the first song that everyone's had a chance to hear with Inhumane Harvest. I mean, that gives like a pretty good indicator, I think, of maybe where things are heading based on what you just said of the other songs that you um, contributed. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to hear it. It sounds like there's some diversity going on on the album. Yeah, I think especially with Eric writing, and you know, as soon as he was officially in the band then he started writing his own songs too so he has three songs music and lyrics as well okay and that's bringing like a new element into the sound of the band too but it's definitely still cannibal tell that it's Eric Rutan he, he has his own style that's identifiable Nice. And uh, so with the new album dropping on April 16th through Metal Blade Records, um, and there's a ton of pre-order options available right now, I'm uh, just curious, do you guys have any input into like what is available format-wise for the fans to buy? Because there's a whole laundry list of things that people can you know look at to pre-order right now. Uh, well, you know what? I, I keep my hands out of that stuff. So I'm not like... I, I'm really not too big on, uh, you know, technical stuff these days. <laughs> okay. I mean, I haven't, I haven't even used a laptop in like over two years. <laughs> <laughs> I basically just do whatever I have to do online through my phone these days. But um, yeah, that's that's all pretty much just Metal Blade and our management, you know, working together on doing that. Um, I don't even, I've never even used any of those formats anyway. (laughs) (laughs) So, I guess I'm not the right person to ask. Oh, hey, you're being honest about it, but yeah, no, I, I think it's cool for the fans though, because they'll they'll find something that they want to buy and pre-order for sure. There's there's so many options. Well, yeah, in this day and age with social media, you know, the record labels are, have been working feverishly to figure out how, you know, like if people aren't going to buy records anymore and they're only streaming stuff, you know, they have to figure out how they're going to make their money still. Right. So that's why there's so many different formats available. Yeah, and that you know, so that actually kind of brings us up to um, well, right now at least for the short term, the future's got kind of a question mark for everybody in terms of like where they can tour and play live, and we're just kind of you know keeping our fingers crossed that things open up maybe by summertime. But uh, does Cannibal have anything kind of loosely planned in, in terms of sort of shows or live streams or just you know in person tour stuff in the fall or what are we kind of looking at right now? Well, our plan is to get out there as soon as we possibly can, as soon as our booking agent says, all right, I can actually book dates for you guys now, which can't happen yet. Otherwise, we would have started touring again already before last year. 
I mean, that was our plan. You know, when we stopped the last tour cycle, we were like, all right, well, let's write the next record, record it, and then release it in November of last year mm-hmm. and start touring again. But that got shut down. So now our plan is... Um, we just plan on touring as soon as we possibly can. That's our plan. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, and that makes sense. I mean, uh, everyone's just kind of uh, just chomping at the bit and just waiting for that green light, basically, when they can get back out there. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not considered essential workers, so we have to sit at home and not work. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, as some bands have been doing it, I don't know if Campbell's going to be even considering it, but uh, is there any talk about trying to do, like, a live stream from a studio or just from, you know, rehearsal studio or anything like that in the meantime? Yeah, there's been plenty of talk, but we just, overall, as a band, we just feel like it's not our thing because if we're a live band. We want to play in front of people, not cameras. Yeah. So, um yeah, I mean, Obituary did one that looked killer. They actually did that down here in a studio in Tampa, not too far from us. So um, Goat Whore ended up driving down from New Orleans to do um, their live stream at the same place, too. Oh. And so, yeah, I mean, we've definitely been talking about doing it. You know, our management was saying it would it would be a good idea to promote the new record doing it. And, yeah, we just feel like we'd rather wait to be able to play in front of people instead of having them watch it on a laptop. It's just not the same energy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For, no, for sure. Um, it's just kind of like something that is kind of the only option right now. But it makes perfect sense, especially for you know some of the heavy bands like Cannibal. It's like you know it's just not the same. There's no energy exchange. There's no pit going on. <laughs> there's no anything. It's just like it's just kind of you know. Yeah, it's a tough one because you know like the way that. Um, I think these other bands are looking at it as like, well, this is how we could generate income while we can't play live shows. Mm -hmm. And it totally makes sense on that side of the coin, but for us, we're we're just like not into the idea of not playing in front of people and just, it would feel like we're just shooting a video or something. Just a vibe that I don't think we're into overall as a band. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense because I have talked to many guests doing virtual interviews since last year, and some of them, when they've talked about doing just live streams as a single artist, they're like, they'll finish a song and there's no applause, there's nothing, so they feel awkward. They're like, what do I do now? <laughs> so I guess I play the next song. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's a totally different vibe than performing in, in front of people. It's uh, I'd rather just play in the band in front of people and not. Like it, it would almost feel like we're faking it in some way. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense because it almost, yeah, you almost feel like you're you're like you're an actor in a sense that we're just doing this and we're we're a freaking live death metal band. <laughs> so what are we doing this for? That's not what we do. Yeah, it's well for the income, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and you know another thing in terms of your gear, I saw I think recently there's a picture of like a new Dean Custom guitar that's being made for you um yeah i just got one um actually it just got finished uh just in time for my birthday i was having a little gathering at my house my wife and invited a bunch of my friends over and they all happened to be guitar players <laughs> i realized I'm like wow everybody here plays guitar that's strange and then, um, you know, Josh Maloney, the artist rep at Dean Guitars, ended up showing up with my new guitar. <laughs> wow. So that was a cool birthday gift. Yeah, no, no kidding. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's like a new Dean Z custom, which is the Explorer shape. I've been using Cadillac for, you know, since like 2006. Mm hmm. But uh, recently, well, about a year or two ago, I decided um, to try a different shape, and I'm, I'm going with the Z now, which is the Explorer shape. So yeah, it's a really nice guitar, 
And uh, yeah, we're we're talking about making a signature guitar soon. Oh, nice. What, what would you want to see? My cu- my customs haven't been signature guitars this whole time. They were just my custom guitars. Mm-hmm. Like the Cadillac, they were calling the Caddy Kill because I had it been killed on the 12th fret. Mm-hmm. So uh, now I think we're to the point where I think they finally want to actually do like a Rob Barrett signature Dean guitar. But we're still working out the details of that, so I can't really say much about it. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's something to look forward to for everybody for sure. Yeah, and hopefully we'll be able to tour soon so I can start playing them in front of people. Yeah, and then people like me can start taking pictures of you playing it in front of people. <laughs> right. Instead of on a live stream. <laughs> yeah. It's it's ridiculous and crazy. I mean, there's obviously nothing anyone can do about it right now, but um, all the shows that I normally would be covering, not only music-wise, but I cover all kinds of other things. That's why it's Eclectic Arts and all that stuff just disappeared as of March of last year. And it's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how long it takes for things to open up because, I mean, the live stream thing is an option that we just decided to just put on the back burner and like a last option if we can't start touring soon, you know, so we might eventually end up doing it at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so it makes again it makes sense that um, yeah keeping it on the back burner and if it becomes like there's really no other option like I don't know if things get worse or something and you can't actually tour for the rest of this year or even into you know 2022 hopefully that doesn't happen but yeah then you might have to revisit the idea or something yeah and that's exactly what we ended up voting on was like well let's not do it right now but. If stuff doesn't open up, like, in, say, over a year from now, then that's something that we need to consider doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, as I kind of wrap this up, Rob, how have you been holding up physically, not right now, obviously, but when you, know, you guys finished that last tour cycle for Red Before Black? I mean, uh, you've been doing this for a long time. You have, like, neck problems or back problems or anything. Um, it's been a long time of, you know, banging heads and playing death metal. Well, I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but the last probably three years now, I, I haven't been head banging anymore. I, it just got to the point where I was like, you know what, I don't I don't feel like I have to do it anymore because I already fucking abused my back and my neck uh, many, many years. And I definitely banged my head as hard as anybody else for a long time. And, you know, it just got to the point where I just decided, you know what, I don't really feel like I need to do it anymore. Like, I would rather concentrate on playing my guitar as good as I can because... It was just getting to the point where I'm just like, you know, halfway through a set and I'm thinking, wow, man, you know, like, I really wish I didn't have to do this. (laughs) I'd rather just, like, concentrate on playing my guitar well because when you're banging your head constantly the whole time, nonstop, pretty much, it kind of started taking away from you know, my ability to play everything as tight as I could. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was taken away a little bit from the tightness of playing the song. Right. So, I just decided not to do it anymore because I don't really feel that I have to. It's like, well, I mean, if you want to see head bang and all the other guys are doing it, you know, George is <laughs> spinning his head like crazy still. <laughs> Watch him. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still waiting for his head to go flying off at some point when he's doing those helicopter headbangs. It's unreal. So, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't really feel like I have to do it anymore. I'd rather just play the songs well. Okay, well, that makes sense. And now I think about it, I mean. And now I'm actually seeing what's happening around me, you know. I mean, for all those years when I'm constantly headbanging, and I don't, I don't see anything that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm actually like. You know, making eye contact with fans in the crowd and, you know, interacting with people and seeing what's happening around me. So I think that's a cool thing in its own way. 
Yeah, you know, now I think about it, the last time I um, shot you guys, um, I got a, a shot of you, you know, doing the metal horns, looking right out at the audience, and yeah, typically yeah, I Yeah, like I never, I never used to hardly ever make eye contact with the crowd when I'm headbanging all the time, so now it's just a different vibe that I have. I'm actually looking around at people acknowledging them seeing me looking at them and you know giving them the horns and i think it's just it's something different than the same thing i've been doing since day one yeah no it's and i, I know the fans appreciate that kind of thing i mean they appreciate everything but uh if they get a well, chance i to... mean you got other dudes that are like oh man rob's getting old he ain't headbanging anymore <laughs> it's like well what the fuck man you think i'm getting younger dude duh you know <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Rob, I want to mention one other thing before I let you go. Um, Alex Story from Cancer Select says, what's up? <laughs> oh, cool, man. What an awesome dude. Yeah, tell him I said hi as well. I, I definitely will. Uh, he's a member of the well, – I'm a member of the Slug Cult for sure, and I've talked to Alex several times, and he just saw that I was going to be talking to you today. He said, Mark, make sure you say what's up to him. <laughs> Dude. Cool. So everybody, Violence Un Unimagined comes out on April 16th, Metal Blade Records. Rob Barrett, Creeper, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time <laughs> today, man. I appreciate it. All right. Well, yeah, like I said, I appreciate it as well. And, um, you know, I'm hoping to be able to see you out there whenever everything opens up again and see you on tour, hopefully, soon. Yeah, man, that, that makes two of us. I hope to see you guys real, real soon. So stay safe down there and take good care. All right, Mark, you too. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.